one of the most universal cleaning challenges, the most age old cleaning questions have to be, how the heck do you clean a glass shower? It's a lot of work. And in this video, not only am I gonna teach you how to clean a glass shower, whether it's a glass panel or a sliding door, yeah, we're even gonna cover those tracks. I'm also gonna talk to you about preventative maintenance so that perhaps you might not ever have to really clean your shower again. So let's stop talking, let's start dealing with the shower. And just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already to subscribe to the Clean My Space channel, make sure that you turn on that notification bell so you always know when we have a new video out. And give this video a thumbs up if you feel like a million bucks when you step out of a clean shower. To understand how to clean and maintain a shower, let's first understand what actually happens in a bathroom when we take a shower. Showers blast all kinds of water and vapor and moisture into the air. And if we are not properly ventilating that shower, that moisture has nowhere to go. And when that happens, mold happens and soap scum happens and odors happen and cleaning challenges start to build up. So this is why if you have a window, which I have right here to my left, or if you have a ventilation fan or ideally both, what you wanna do is ventilate your bathroom while you are showering and for at least 30 minutes after. So if you have one of those timer fans, that's a great thing to use. If you're planning on upgrading your bathroom, that is a super thing to have. We upgraded to that, it is really helpful. The other thing that you'll notice in your bathroom, whether you have a glass panel or a glass door or not, is the buildup of soap scum. Now, we worked really hard to get soap scum on the shower. We took Castile soap and water and sprayed the glass down several times to make sure that we had a really good visual for you guys in this video. But the reason we don't have soap scum is because we remove moisture after each shower using a squeegee. So when you think about your shower, think about preventative maintenance. The more you can do after a shower, the less you will have to do on a regular basis cleaning. And for a little 101 on how to squeegee your shower, by the way, you don't need a glass panel to do this. Even if you have a stand-in shower with a tub, you can still do this on your tiles and in the tub. The idea is you basically wanna take all of that water off the wall, off the floor, and get it down the drain so that it does not dry on a surface. So the way that I squeegee this shower is, and it takes me about 30 seconds to do, when I'm done and I turn the water off, grab my squeegee, I work top to bottom, left to right on this glass panel. Then I quickly do the tiles, just any areas that I notice need it. But to be honest, I slack on the tiles because it's really hard to see build up there. But then we get down and we do the floors. They're high contrast, they're dark. So anytime any soap scum is left behind, you can see the white on the floor and it doesn't look good. So I crouch down, I sort of work my way around the uh, floor and I get everything into the drain, which is central. And then I just hop out of the shower. Whole thing takes 30, 45 seconds. If you don't want to squeegee, if you're in a smaller space, you can also grab a plush microfiber cloth or an old towel and use that to dry the surface as well. So we'll start off with cleaning the glass in the shower. There are a couple of different approaches and techniques you can take, so I will mix and match them, and then you can use whatever feels right for you in your bathroom. Okay, if you get in there and you're like, wow, this soap scum is raging, and I haven't dealt with this in a while, you might wanna pick yourself up some full strength vinegar or cleaning vinegar the way that you know it is that is you just look at the percentage of acidic acid. General vinegar is 5%. Cleaning vinegar can be anywhere from six up to 10%. When you use it, make sure that you're well ventilated and like your space is well ventilated. So turn on the fan, open a window and you wanna make sure it doesn't get on your face and really on your hands because it does have quite a bit of acid on it. So what you'll do is you'll spray the surface very well. You're gonna let that sit for a couple of minutes. Vinegar is awesome because it breaks down soap scum. So let the vinegar do the work for you. Then you can grab a damp sponge and you can start to scrub. I use a non-scratch sponge for this clearly because I don't wanna scratch the glass. Give it a good wipe down and then rinse. 
One thing I will mention about cleaning the shower is that I do all of my rinsing at the very end because I'm standing in there to clean it. So I don't wanna be wet and soaking when I'm cleaning. I do all of my cleaning part of the cleaning at once on the walls, then I do the floors, and then I rinse everything and buff dry at the very end. Now, the next thing that you can try if you have just a regular amount of soap scum is to make your own DIY soap scum cleaner. It's just equal parts, regular vinegar and dish soap. Put that in a spray bottle. You wanna add some essential oils to be fancy. Go for it, shake it up and treat your surface. Spray it, let it sit for a few minutes. You guys know I love pre-treating. And then you can get your non-scratching sponge, Go to the scrubby side and start scrubbing using the S pattern, working your way from the top to the bottom, left to right. Now I'm about five foot five. So if you have a full panel like this, you might want to consider either bringing a step ladder into the shower. Obviously that's why I don't like cleaning the floor first because you want to make sure it's safe and stable. Or another option you can use is something like a sponge on a stick or one of those flathead mops. You can use that to do some of your cleaning and scrubbing as well. So lots of different ways that you can slice this and dice this. As long as you're getting the job done, that's what counts. One little tip, if you encounter a really challenging area, you can put a little bit of baking soda on your sponge. You can respray it with your product that you've whipped up. You can also use a tub and towel cleaner, by the way, but I like to make DIY stuff. It's easy and it saves money. So throw some baking soda on that sponge, give that area a little scrub and you'll see soap scum literally scrubs right off. Next up, we have to deal with the tiles. These are quite simple. You can either use that DIY recipe of vinegar and dish soap, that works really well. Another great way to clean your tiles, which I also really love for getting into the grout if you have light grout, unlike me, I have dark grout. But what you can do is you can make up a recipe of equal parts baking soda and dish soap. It's a little paste. You can apply it with the scrubby side of that non-scratching sponge. Use the S pattern, let it sit for a couple of minutes then come back and start scrubbing again using the scrubby side S pattern top to bottom and you'll see soap scum comes right off. Again, resist the urge to rinse before you get to the floors. All right, so you've done your shower wall, you've done your tiles. When I say shower wall, I mean your glass shower wall. You've done your tiles. Now we're gonna do the floor. When it comes to cleaning the tiled floors, you're gonna use the exact same thing that you used to clean either your glass panel or your tiles, depending on how much soap scum there is. You can use either or. Take your sponge, work from one side to the other using the S pattern to apply the product. What I always like to do is work in halves. So I do the first half, of the floor and then I'll clean that. I'll rinse it clean so I can actually step on and work from the other side. I will also squeegee it dry so that I have a dry surface to stand on. And then you can do the other side, same thing. So you kind of have to think about dividing the area in half so that you actually have a safe and easy surface to work on. Now I should say this, if you have natural stone in your bathroom, that's terrazzo, marble, limestone, quartz, you will know if you have natural stone in there. Do not use vinegar, just stick to soap and water. You can also pick up a specialty stone cleaning product if that makes you feel more comfortable. So when you're cleaning a big shower like this, I always like to rinse and dry the floor first. That way I have a safe area to stand on. And then I will take the shower head sprayer and I will just go to town and start spraying the walls down. If you don't have a removable shower head like this, you'll wanna get some sort of jug and fill that up with water, start at the top and sort of drizzle water down the walls to let everything, soap, product, vinegar fall to the bottom. Once this is done, you're gonna get your squeegee or an extra super plushy microfiber cloth. One of ours are great for this and you just wanna start drying top to bottom. That is how you get that crystal clean shine. Sliding door tracks, those are a real pain. And I feel for you if you have them, they do pose an extra cleaning challenge. Like with the shower in general, you wanna make sure that those tracks get dried after every shower. So you might wanna keep a microfiber cloth handy and you just use that as part of your post shower routine, do a little squeegee and then take a cloth, run your finger in the cloth along the tracks to get out any of that extra moisture. That is your preventative maintenance step. 
but to actually deal with what's going on in there, you might want to use a product like the full strength vinegar. Let the area kind of sit and soak for a little bit, get a cleaning toothbrush in there, give it a really good scrub, and then use a microfiber cloth to start wiping out and removing some of that buildup. You might have to do it a couple of times. You might want to throw some baking soda in there for added abrasion, but eventually you'll get it clean and then for the love of God, maintain it. That wonky shower head that starts to spray water in all directions and have that crusty looking buildup. Vinegar, again, is going to be an easy fix for this one. For a super large shower head like mine, it's going to take a little bit of jimmy rigging. You might have to remove it or you might have to use an extra large plastic bag to do this or you might even want to spray the vinegar on directly. But for a regular size shower head, you can basically take a zipper lock bag, fill it with regular strength vinegar and affix it to the shower head using an elastic band. Let it soak overnight and then remove the bag carefully because you don't want to take a shower in vinegar. And once that's done, you can just give it a nice little wipe down and the vinegar will have eaten away at all of those mineral deposits and all of that buildup, making your shower work much better. That was comprehensive. I think if you didn't know anything about cleaning a shower before, you are now at near expert level. So the next time you have to tackle your shower to clean, you are gonna do an amazing job. And that brings me to this week's comment question. I have a few, they're all about the shower. The first one is, do you prefer like to relax, taking a really hot, nice, long shower, or do you prefer taking a nice, hot, relaxing bath? Let me know in the comments. For me, I've recently taken to baths to relax, and I'm so happy with that, and I like to use showers to get clean, but I like to use baths to really chill and relax. I'd also love to know, are you someone who has been squeegeeing your shower for a long time now, or is this kind of a new concept that you sort of resent, but you're gonna give a try? And I'd also love to know, in the shower, do you like to use any essential oils? For me, right before I get into the shower, I like to throw in a few drops, depending on how I'm feeling, like I'll use a bit of lavender if I wanna relax, use a little bit of peppermint if I wanna be picked up, I'll use some eucalyptus if I'm not feeling well. So let me know if you like using essential oils in the shower in the comments down below. If you want to see what we're up to during the rest of the week, you can follow along on Instagram. I'm at Melissa Maker Chad, is at the Chad Reynolds, and the two of us are at Clean My Space. If you like the Clean My Space channel and you want to support the work that we do, the easiest way to do that is just to watch another one of our videos right after this one. And here are a couple, oh, there's my hair, I think you might love. If you want to learn more about Maker's Clean Microfiber Cloths, you can click this button right over here. There is a button down there that lets me know you care, so click it if you liked this video and click this button right here to subscribe and begin your journey to a cleaner life. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.